What is going on everybody? We are back here today with another career sim here on Madden 21 and today we are doing the career simulation for the number one overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Trevor Lawrence. So you guys showed good support on the Kyler Murray sim and you guys want more on the channel. If you guys want to see these like constantly coming out on the channel, let's see if this video can get over 400 likes and always let me know down below which career sim of which player or anything else you'd want to see next. So without further ado, let's get into the Trevor Lawrence career. So Trevor Lawrence will be starting out his career as a 79 overall. He has superstar X factor. Boy, is he going to have a good career. Let's see what he can do in his rookie season, and let's see if he can take home Offensive Rookie of the Year. So after Trevor Lawrence's first year in the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars do go 7-9. and nine. I am curious to see who else the Jaguars got in the 2021 NFL Draft, as it looks like they got Rondell Moore, who's a 76 overall. They picked up Alex Leatherwood, Zayvon Collins, so they did get some playmakers here in Jacksonville to build around Trevor Lawrence. So as I said, they ended up going seven and nine in Lawrence's rookie year. We'll see what his numbers were. Seventh in the NFL in passing yards, 32 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. He ended up getting 42 carries for 155 on the ground. And then the number one receiver was DJ Chark with Ronald Moore at number two. And then LaVisca Chenault at three. And the Jaguars actually signed Rob Gronkowski. So that is Lawrence's tight end at the moment. And Lawrence does take home AFC offensive rookie of the year that's what i'm talking about and he's also fifth in offensive player of the year in the afc so we can upgrade him a little bit more how many uh, upgrade points he has five at the moment so he's going to be up to like an 82 overall going into the offseason so trevor lawrence is up to an 86 overall going into his second season here in the nfl we can take a look to see if the jacksonville jaguars added any playmakers around trevor lawrence so at the running back position it is james robinson still also jared patterson is here at the fullback position alex arma wide receiver we got shark chenault Rondell Morris, Colin Johnson, and Emmanuel Hall. Tight end is Christopher Herndon, the fourth. And then the offensive line, still Alex Leatherwood or Alec Leatherwood. Andrew Norwell, Brandon Winder. Right guard is AJ Can, and right tackle is Juwan Taylor. Could be a lot worse. It's not too bad. We'll see what Trevor Lawrence does in his second season in the NFL. So the Jacksonville Jaguars end up going 9-7, but it's looking like they did make the playoffs. Okay, I was going to say, I didn't think they made it, but they ended up making it as a wild card team taking on the 11 and 5 buffalo bills here in wild card weekend we do have four skill points for trevor lawrence he's going to be a 90 overall going into his third season even with the morale boost for the playoffs he'll be over a 90 overall going up against buffalo maybe he can put the team on his back and defeat them but it's going to be a tough task going up against josh allen and that bills team who are definitely a better team and have a better overall roster than the jaguars do at the moment but yeah this will be lawrence's first career playoff game we could take a look at the stats in his second season so he goes down in passing yards i think but it, i could be wrong 34 touchdowns to 12 interceptions is great he was sacked 32 times james robinson's looking like a fantastic running back behind trevor lawrence he gets over 125 yards there and then receiving wise dj shark is Trevor's favorite target out there with Rondell Moore and LaVisca Chanel behind him. Taking a look at the yearly awards, is Trevor Lawrence in the MVP race? He is not. If we go over to AFC Offensive Player of the Year, he is number six. And then best quarterback, Trevor Lawrence is third. So can Lawrence and the Jaguars knock off the 11-5 Buffalo Bills and pull off an absolute massive upset? And they do. They go 24 and 21. That is their victory over the Buffalo Bills. That's actually very shocking that Lawrence and the Jags were able to beat them on the road too. That is tough. Lawrence, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. His passing touchdowns were two. Rondo Moore, he had two of them. And then Josh Oliver, it looks like the backup tight end, ended up getting some action there. Lawrence, five carries for 12 yards. And the Jaguars are going on to the divisional round to face on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. It's going to be tough to beat them. The Browns are always great in the sim, and yeah, they end up beating them by a touchdown. The stats in this game where the Browns end up beating them by a touchdown. Lawrence played well, and wow, it's Kyle Allen as their quarterback, so they don't have Baker Mayfield anymore. As Trevor Lawrence, two touchdowns, one interception, and then James Robinson did pretty well on the ground as DJ Chark, six for 94. LaVisca Chenault, eight for 70 in a touchdown. Colin Johnson also found the end zone. And you know what? Honestly, the Jaguars losing in the divisional round in Lawrence's second year, that is definitely definitely a plus so we are now here in trevor lawrence's third career season in the nfl we'll see if the jaguars added anybody to the squad maybe as a 
offensive line help or another receiver. If we take a look, Lawrence is backed up by Greg Keane and Travis Scott. <laughs> Travis Scott making over to the uh, NFL world. So Alex Armour is still our fullback. Uh, Rondell Moore, Chanel, and Chark is still kind of the one, two, three. We have Kenya Gatewood, Nick Lowell, and Dion Pierman. Tight end is Anthony Fersker. Verkser, and still not great tight ends. Ian Thomas, former Panther, still have Leatherwood. And then we have Alejandro Villanueva at the left tackle, still Norwell as our left guard. Creed Humphrey is our center at the current moment. No more Brandon Windor. Gabe Jackson at right guard. And then Jawan Taylor at right tackle. If this team added anybody on the defensive end, not in the top. Actually, they added Matthew Ioninus and David Collins has progressed into a very good player. And they also added Adrian Amos. So we'll see what Trevor Lawrence can do in his third season in his NFL career. And at the end of Lawrence, his third season the Jaguars go six and ten and they miss out on the playoffs next year will be Lawrence's fourth year and then they'll pick up the fifth year option and then we'll get into possibly a new contract for Lawrence and get him to be a very wealthy man because I'm sure the Jaguars will be throwing the kitchen sink at Trevor Lawrence or just backing up the Brinks truck you know so we'll see what Lawrence's numbers were here in his third season the uh Titans were long aways from everybody else there in the AFC South. So Lawrence was sixth in passing yards, 4,300 there, 35 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, 69% completion percentage through for 270 yards a game he was sacked 33 times rushing wise james robinson not much of a running game this year but there were kind of a two it was it was not really running back by kim or it was running back by committee i should say with matt norris also getting 75 carries i don't know why james robinson is really good dj chark just having a great career with trevor warrens rondo moore as well and others uh, for sir and levis chanel james robinson 310 yards okay and then yeah we all know that kind of trevor warrens was at 33 times which is a decent amount here we awards we can see daniel jones won mvp for the new england patriots baker mayfield is on the jets and trevor lawrence finished sixth we know he's going to finish at least once in mvp voting he was number eighth in offensive player of the year and best quarterback he was number five on to year four for trevor lawrence this is the last year on his deal and he will have the fifth year option so we'll see if the jaguars do offer him a deal in the first couple weeks of the season and actually i do want to show you guys to see if they improve the team at all, at least maybe on the offensive line, that would be nice. They added Stephon Gilmore. Lawrence is a 94 overall. Wow. Oh, Corey Winsley. They added very nice, even though he is 33 years old. Kyle Fuller's on the team now. Okay, so taking a look, James Robinson, 91 overall. We still have Alex Arma as our fullback receivers. Shark, Chenault, and Rondell Moore with Gatewood, Lowell, and Pierman. Tight end is Mark Holloway, a rookie out of Indiana State. We'll see how he does. And then still Leatherwood, Norwell, Corey Lindsay, which is nice. And even though we kind of had Creed Humphrey, we don't. Uh, Mark Lewinsky is our right guard, and our right tackle is still Jawan Taylor. So the Jaguars have offered Trevor Lawrence a deal. I can't see what it is, but I think Lawrence would like to stay with Jacksonville and kind of finish off a second contract there with them. And then if maybe no Super Bowl happens or a team improvement, then maybe he can ask for a trade or go on to a next team. It is an eight year deal. Wow. Till 2031. So yes, he'll be have 11 years under his belt at the end of this. Not really making a lot of money in 2030 or 2031. It's a very front loaded contract. So it looks like you can't request a trade. I was wondering if that was a thing. I guess you can demand to get cut. But you really can't request a trade. So, all right, the next eight years in Jacksonville. Let's see if maybe we can win a Super Bowl sometime soon. So, the Jaguars do make the playoffs here in the 2024 season. They go 10 and 6, and they have one of the wild card spots. But another playoff appearance for Lawrence and the Jags. He goes for 4,100 yards, 35 TDs, 9 interceptions. James Robinson, bounce back year, has a fantastic season. And receiving wise, LaVisca Chenault was the highest yardage receiver out of everybody on the team this year. So, we'll see who maybe one MVP. Was it Trevor Lawrence? Possibly. No, it was Baker Mayfield. Jalen Hurts third for the Saints. Trevor Lawrence wasn't even in the top 10. Wow. Offensive player of the year, Trevor Lawrence was fifth and best quarterback. He was sixth. And then we'll see that they're facing the Oakland, excuse me, Las Vegas Raiders here in wild card weekend we'll upgrade his field general he's up to a 96 overall uh and kind of a strong arm so he's up to a 97 in his fourth season or actually this is his fifth season now excuse me so wait no this is his fourth season uh yes this is his fourth season i'm losing my mind can they beat the raiders and win a playoff game for the first time in this video actually no i think they uh he has won uh, a playoff game two years ago but 
the Raiders win it anyway. They end up winning 28 to 16. That is unfortunate. Another playoff defeat for Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. We will take a look at the box score of that game. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was very close. Lawrence, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked three times. Uh, Dennis Brown got most of the carries, so it's looking like, unfortunately, James Robinson was hurt. Receiving-wise, Rondo Moore, 6 for 90, but did not get the job done, and the Jaguars are going home early once again. So on to year five for Trevor Lawrence's career. We'll see if the Jaguars added anybody in this offseason. Doesn't really look like it too much. They added Joe Tooney, though, okay. Running back still James Robinson. Alex Armour is still at the fullback position. Shark up to superstar development. Chanel is there. Rondell Moore is gone. Marquiston Hopkins, I can't see. Or no, I will be able to actually see what round he was selected in. If we go check, he was actually their first round pick. So the Jaguars using a first round pick to build around Trevor Lawrence. You love to see it. Mark Holloway, the tight end. Alex Leatherwood still the left tackle. Left guard, Joe Tooney. Got Norwell there. Center is Creed Humphrey. No more Corey Lindsay. Bo Wilson, right guard and right tackle is Jawan Taylor. Trevor Lawrence is now a 99 overall at the end of year five. It's actually absurd how quick he's been developing in the NFL. And it is, maybe I should have seen what Lawrence could have done in free agency. Obviously he would have had, I think this year with the fifth year option. It is, I don't know, maybe you can request a trade and I just don't know how to do that, but I'm pretty sure I would have figured it out. You can demand a release. I mean, maybe use your management. Yeah, you can't, you can retire. Unfortunately, you won't be able to request a trade. So the Jaguars actually go 12 and 4, and they get their first ever buy here in Trevor Lawrence's career. That is very nice to see. So, Trevor Lawrence, did he possibly win MVP in year five? He was 15th in passing yards, 30 touch, 36 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He was sacked only 19 times. Shout out to the offensive line. Stevie Scott, no more James Robinson. Or Robinson might have gotten hurt throughout the year. Yeah, and Stevie Scott was kind of the main running back. He had 11 touchdowns. DJ Chark over 1,200 yards. Hopkins, the rookie receiver, 769 and five touchdowns. Elvis Christian 57, 609 and six. And Mark Holloway, 65 for 603 and seven. And we'll see what's up with the awards. Does Trevor Lawrence maybe get MVP? He does not. Mac Jones finished second. Trevor Lawrence actually finished eighth. And then over to the AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Trevor Lawrence finished sixth while being the, what quarterback? The fourth best quarterback in the AFC. So the Jacksonville Jaguars are taking on division rival, the Tennessee Titans here in the divisional weekend. And who's going to be coming out on top? Wow, another playoff L for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence has not been winning many games in his playoff career so far. He goes for 275, two touchdowns, one pick. Josh Rosen won over Trevor Lawrence. Wow, did not expect to see him there. Receiving wise, Marquise and Hopkins played pretty well. DJ Chark found the end zone. Nick Wall found the end zone. But another playoff defeat after the best season of Lawrence's career. It's disappointing. On to year six now of Trevor Lawrence's career. We'll take a look at the opening day roster. Add anybody new to the team. Fletcher Cox, 35 year old Fletcher Cox on the team. LaVisca Chenault up to an 87 overall. Very nice, very nice. Jawan Taylor up to a 79. James Robinson will still be the opening running back. Alex Armour is still there at fullback. We got Chark, Chenault, Hopkins, Gatewood, and Nick Lowell. Tight end is Mark Holloway still. Leatherwood at left tackle. Ben Bredson uh, or Bredesen at our left guard. Creed Humphrey at center. Right guard Tommy Kramer. And then right tackle is Jawan Taylor. And the Jaguars go 8-8 eight and eight, and it's looking like they got the last wild card spot and are the number. Oh, actually, the Patriots might have also went 8-8, eight and, eight and they are there as well. So, the Jaguars lose four less games, or excuse me, they win four less games than last season after going 12-4. and four. Dr. Lawrence, 19th in passing yards, 31 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. He was sacked 38 times, is a lot. 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns for James Robinson, 42 and 182 for Lawrence. And then here were the receiving numbers at the end of the Trevor Lawrence's sixth year in the NFL. Looking at yearly awards, MVP Lawrence, not there in top 10 AFC Offensive Player of the Year. He is not there. Wow. So a big step back for Trevor Lawrence this year. And best quarterback, he is going to be there at number nine. So we'll see if the Jaguars can pull off the upset over the Jets. Jets, a team that could have had Trevor Lawrence, but they ended up beating the Rams. And the Jaguars upset the Jets. They end up winning 31 to 20 and are going on to face the Cincinnati Bengals in the divisional round, who are 13 and 3. Lawrence versus Burrow. It's going to be a good one. Lawrence wasn't really all that good, but the defense looks like he had picked up the dub for the Jacksonville Jaguars, sacking Baker Mayfield four times. 
And James Robinson was phenomenal on the rush or on the ground. Same with Nick Conley receiving wise. James Robinson, two for 25 and a touchdown. Yeah, just wasn't a lot happening with the passing game. And we'll see if Lawrence can knock off the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll upgrade him before the game. He's got two skill points to upgrade. We'll get Scrambler upgraded a little bit. On to the divisional round to face the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 13-3. and three. Can the Jaguars pull off the upset? They cannot. So still cannot make it to the conference championship. Is Trevor Lawrence the new Chris Paul? Is he the new Tony Romo? He just cannot get to the conference championship in the first six years of his career. He didn't make too many mistakes in this game, but could not pick up the win. Joe Burrow threw for a lot more yardage than him. James Robinson had a fantastic game. Maybe should have gone to him a little bit more. Don't know what Urban Meyer's game plan was, but another year, another disappointing finish for Lawrence and the Jags. So Trevor Lawrence will be going into his seventh season next year, and he still has a bunch of years left on his current Jaguars contract. Still has five years left. On to year seven for Trevor Lawrence. We'll see any new players on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Doesn't look like anybody too big. Cameron Curl. Cameron Curl is here, excuse me. Dennis Kaiser, looks like he's a pretty good corner. But uh, running back, still James Robinson. He's a 95 overall. We have a new fullback, no more Alex Armour. It's Gabe Neighbors. He's 29. DJ Chark, Chenault, and Hopkins, still the receiving trio. Mark Holloway, still here at tight end. Alex Leatherwood, still here as well. Ben Bredesen is here once again. Center Creed Humphrey, he's been here for a long time. Tommy Kramer and Jawan Taylor, who's also been there for a minute. And the Jaguars have a 13-3 best record in Lawrence's career, but they can't even get the one seed as the Ravens were 13-3 or better. That is unfortunate. But hey, a great season from the Jaguars. Lawrence fifth in passing yards, 4,300 yards, 44 touchdowns, six interceptions. He was sacked only 23 times. James Robinson has a solid season, but Nick Conley getting 138 carries. Uh, and then two thousand yard receivers for the first time in Lawrence's career with Chanel and DJ Chark. Marquis and Hopkins played pretty well. And then there's Mark Holloway getting to the end zone seven times. So was this the year Lawrence takes home MVP? It was. Trevor Lawrence's first career MVP happens in year seven. So if we go to AFC Offensive Player of the Year, number one and best quarterback, number one. So that is the best season of Lawrence's career. Can he win the Super Bowl this year, though? Or at least just go to the conference championship. It is a shame that they don't get a bye with a 13-3 and record because they could lose in round one. But no, they beat, they barely beat the Cleveland Browns, but they ended up winning by three. 24 to 21 was a close one. Lawrence out to Kyle Allen. Not a great performance for Lawrence, but it got the job done, so it did not matter. Oscar Morrison led us in carries. Lawrence had two catches for 10 yards, and then Quinn Miller and LaVisca Chenault found the end zone. So in the divisional round, taking on the Bengals, who defeated the Jaguars last year. Lawrence, does he have any upgrade points? He does, so he will be upgrading. That's Scrambler, almost getting everything to a max upgrade and at a full 99. So divisional round against the Bengals facing another AFC North opponent and Joe Burrow gets the better edge of Trevor Lawrence once again. It is unfortunate. Another divisional loss for Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. He can just not make it to the conference championship. He just can't do it. They ended up losing 45 to 23, 22 point defeat. Lawrence sacked one, zero interceptions. It's just maybe the rushing game. Yeah, re really not much out of the Jaguars. Lawrence did get in the end zone. It is unfortunate that it's another playoff defeat for Lawrence and the Jags. So on to year eight. Check out the Jaguars roster going into it. Still no really new faces at the top. They added Nick Bolton. So they had Nick Bolton and Zayvon Collins, both from the 2021 draft class. So no James Robinson for the first time in Lawrence's career. It's going to be Jarrett Patterson. The seven-year man out of Buffalo. Fullback is Gabe Neighbors. Receivers are Chark. Chark, I don't know why I said that so weirdly. Chenault and Marquise and Hopkins is over an 80 overall. Tight end is Quinn Miller, so no Mark Holloway. I feel like Lawrence has still never had like a really good tight end in his career. The offensive line does not look very good. What's going to happen this year for Lawrence? The Jaguars go 10-6, and six, and are they going to lose to the Bengals for the third season in a row? Here in the playoffs, it is wild card weekend. It's not the divisional round, but we will see what happens here as the Jaguars have been getting owned by the Bengals. You could say they are the Jaguars' fathers. As Lawrence, 11th in passing yards, he has a solid year. 4,200 yards, 33 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Jared Patterson actually has a pretty good season, but Nick Conley gets nine rushing touchdowns. 
Oregon finds the end zone three times on the ground. DJ Shark has a fantastic season in his 10th year. Chenault had seven touchdowns. Marcus Hopkins with eight. We'll check out the awards as Florence win MVP two years in a row. He does not. He ends up not even finishing in the top 10. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Trevor Lawrence, not in the top 10. And best quarterback, he's going to finish at number eight. So will the Jaguars beat the Bengals? Or are the Bengals going to beat them? Once again, I hate that it says upgrade player, but there's no upgrade there. So we'll see what happens here. In Lawrence's eighth year, does he lose to the Bengals again? Or can he finally beat them? He finally beats them 24 to 20 and he's going on to the division round to take on the 13 and 3 Baltimore Ravens. It's going to be tough going up against Lamar Jackson, but he throws for 320 yards, does not throw an interception. Uh, oh my God, they were going up against James Robinson. Look at that. The enemy now, the enemy. But Patterson has a pretty good game and receiving wise. Uh, Jared Patterson actually had the most receiving yards. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was definitely very diverse with who he wanted to throw to this game. So taking on the Ravens, it's going to be tough. 13 and 3 on the road in Baltimore at MT Bank Stadium. Let's see what happens. Can Lawrence go to his first conference championship? He cannot. Okay, this is the meme. This is the running meme now. He cannot make it to the conference championship. He is still yet to do it. He has had so many playoff divisional L's. It is quite unfortunate. It really is that he can just not go to the conference championship at all. On to year nine for Trevor Lawrence. He does have three years left on that massive contract he signed. About five years ago, we'll take a look at the Jaguars roster. Do they help him out at all or maybe get the team a little bit better? Edward McGriff, it looks like they sign. Patterson is still the running back. Fullback is Thomas Culver. Wide receivers, it's Chark, Chenault, McGriff. And they don't even bring back Marquis and Hopkins, their former first-round pick. But they bring in Edward McGriff, seven-year man out of LSU. Tight end is Quinn Miller. Left tackle still Alex Leatherwood. Joe Goldstein, left guard, center Derek Goodwill. So no more Creed Humphrey. And then right tackle, we got Juwan Taylor. So at the end of Trevor Lawrence's eighth season, they go nine and seven and they're in the playoffs once again, taking on the eight and eight Buffalo Bills. Eight and eight should be a winnable game, but it's on the road in Orchard Park, I believe. So I don't even know what their stadium is actually called. It is just Bills Field. Okay, so we'll see if the Jaguars can pick up the road victory. Lawrence over 4,000 yards, only four interceptions. That is a career best that he played all 16 games he did. Rushing wise, Jared Patterson, it was pretty enjoying It was a running back by committee. Lawrence 196 and one touchdown. Receiving wise, Chenault over 1,000 yards. Chark almost 900. McGriff over 700. And then Quinn Miller, six touchdowns. Uh, and almost he had 700 yards. So taking a look at the yearly awards, Lawrence, did he finish top 10 in MVP? He did at number seven. And then AFC Offensive Player of the Year, he was fifth with being the number six best quarterback. Really don't know how that works, but we will see if the Jaguars can defeat the Bills and go on to the divisional round where Trevor Lawrence will probably just lose anyway. So let's see what happens here against the Bills and Trevor Lawrence beats them to go to the divisional round on the road. Now they have to face the 9-7 Broncos, but we'll take a look at the box score of this game. They end up just barely beating them by two points. Allen and Lawrence both played really well. Lawrence was sacked five times. Edward McGriff though stepping up. I am actually curious to see how many times Lawrence was sacked throughout the season because this O-line is really not all that good anymore and he was sacked only 24 times. Okay. Maybe it's because he's got 99 scrambling. So we'll see if that's the case. Can the Jaguars beat the Broncos and finally go to the conference championship? They do. Wow. For the first time in Trevor Lawrence's career, he's in the conference championship. It took him eight years and a bunch of playoff runs. But would you look at that? They beat them by a touchdown. Lawrence plays as best as he could. Drew Locke had a solid game. But yeah, Lawrence stepped up big time. And so did Edward McGriff. That's why they picked him up, I guess. Because he can show out in the playoffs. So taking on the 8-8 eight and eight Raiders. Could the Jaguars go to the Super Bowl? Or are they going to lose in the conference championship? They are going to the Super Bowl. They blow out or just win by 18 against the Las Vegas Raiders. And yeah, Trevor Lawrence is in the Super Bowl for the first time in his career. He threw one touchdown, 201 yards. They have Thomas Green, second year man out of Notre Dame. Rushing wise, Jared Patterson was okay. Receiving wise, Edward McGriff, man, this guy is showing out. So nine and seven Jags versus the 11 and five Falcons. Let's see if the Jaguars can win and can Lawrence get his first Super Bowl or is he gonna lose the game? Trevor Lawrence is a not a Super Bowl champion, damn. They get absolutely pummeled 
by the Falcons, losing by 21 points. Yeah, not how you want to have your Super Bowl debut. Lawrence didn't play terribly, but Mac Jones outdueled Lawrence. They also have Najee Harris, the Alabama connection there. Receiving-wise, Ethan Baldwin played well. And Edward McGriff did not really do much. I mean, he did find the end zone, but that is unfortunate. Trevor Lawrence finally goes to the Super Bowl eight years in and gets blown out. It is now year 10 for Trevor Lawrence on the uh, NFL scene. We'll see. The Shaq Wars team does not look very good or very promising. New running back Gabriel Bennett, fullback Colin Cameron, receivers, no more DJ Shark. Oh, wow. They're just not doing a job resigning any of their top guys. This is not really good. Lawrence is going to be a free agent, not this offseason, but next year. These could be Lawrence's final two years in Jacksonville. I feel like going nine and seven is the Jaguars' favorite record, but hey, another playoff appearance. They do win the AFC South, and they are gonna be hosting a playoff game against the Ravens. Trevor Lawrence has a fantastic year in his 10th season. He's in double digits now. It's crazy. Edward McGriff, 979, eight touchdowns. Just imagine if Lawrence had just like, just, I don't know, some weapons and like the old line isn't very good. This, I don't know, this could be Lawrence's second to last year. He comes ninth in MVP voting, AFC Offensive Player of the Year. He finished sixth, and best quarterback, he ended up finishing sixth as well. So can the Jaguars beat the Ravens in wildcard weekend at home, or are they going to have a playoff L early and often? And wow, another first round exit for the Jaguars. Was last year an outlier? I don't know. They ended up going to the Super Bowl for the first time in his career, but will they ever go back? I don't know. So let's see. Will the Jaguars try to maybe sign some players, draft some alignment to convince Lawrence to stay because he will be a free agent in one year. Next year is the last year of his contract. So we'll see what happens. So this is year 11 for Trevor Lawrence. Let's see the Jaguars roster. Okay, they added Jamie Compton, a 90 overall running back, and it looks like they added a receiver in Shelton Buckner, who's 26 years old. So it's nice to see the front office and them doing some stuff to try to keep uh, Trevor Warren. Seth Williams out of Auburn. He's still here. Edward McGriff has regressed hard. New tight end at all, Parker Cook. Yeah, we'll see what he can do. Offensive line, not very good, but it's different. So we'll see what happens in Lawrence's 11th year 11th year yeah and i think we are going to be declining a certain extension that we're going to be getting this week yeah he's going to be a free agent and the jaguars do go 10 and 6 they have a road game against the colts they have yet to face the colts in warrants career it says the upgrade player got two points but i think everything's at 99 for mr Ward. so taking a look at the stats 11 uh, passing yards 4200 there 42 and a half, 139 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He was sacked 25 times. Rushing Jamie Compton over 1,000 yards. He had seven touchdowns. Lawrence, 222 yards. That could be a career high. Shelton Buckner over 1,000 yards. He gets 10 TDs. Seth Williams, 92 for 950. Five TDs. Not a terrible receiving core around Trevor Lawrence, but I think like he could ask for a better O-line. Maybe a good tight end for once, and I don't know. But we'll see. He finishes second in MVP. Baker steals that from him. But he already got an MVP, second in offensive play of the year, and first and best quarterback in the AFC. So, will the Jaguars lose in round one wildcard weekend again, or will they win? They do win, 26 to 20. Let's just keep advancing. Let's see if maybe this will change things up. Chiefs divisional round, nope, another L. And that could have been Trevor Lawrence's last year as a Jacksonville Jaguar in the wildcard weekend. They ended up beating the Colts by six. Lawrence ended up playing pretty well. 346, two touchdowns, one interception. Sheldon Buckner had a great game. Same with Seth Williams and Donovan Pete. And then the next weekend, though, wasn't how the Jaguars wanted it to go. They ended up losing by 10. Lawrence got, I guess you could say, outdueled by Patrick Mahomes. So it is the offseason time, and this is probably going to be Trevor Lawrence's, yeah, first time in free agency. And he's going to be finding himself a new team. He is no longer on the Jacksonville Jaguars, so we'll see. Where he's going to end up, does he retire? I don't believe he will be retired. Miles Jack retired. Josh Allen, so a bunch of former, and Jonathan Allen, a bunch of former Jaguars are hanging it up. 
is a shame. So we'll see what Lawrence can do here and or what his offers are going to be. So I'm sure he's going to have multiple offers, but it says three teams bidding. So we'll take a look at the Bills, the Dolphins, and the Cowboys, seeing if they have anything that's enticing. So the Bills were the first team. They already have Josh Allen. At running back, they have Michael Allen. And then receiver, John Odom, Jerry Holloway, Chad Wind uh, Windy. Tight end, Jeffrey Macklin. How's the O-line? The O-line is okay. It's actually not bad. They have at least three good old linemen, but with Josh Allen, doesn't seem like a lot of sense because that's already a lot of money tied up into Allen. Why go there when then they won't be able to spend money on other players? Next up was the Miami Dolphins, or we can actually go to the Cowboys first. So at quarterback, they do have Jimmy Vance, so they could use a QB. Running back, Joe Mullins. Fullback, Hugh Marshall. Receivers, they have Marcus, uh, Marcus Drayden. George Hayes, Doug Adams. Tight end, Drew Clifford. So not a lot of good receiving targets. And the O-line, it's young, but it's not that good. It's not. And then finally, the Dolphins. It's looking like that they have an okay O-line. A couple high 70s and a nice 84 left tackle. Tight end, Marlon Wilbin. Rod receivers. They have Jamar Chase. Pierre Thomas. Greg Fleming. Okay, that is nice to go and play with Jamar Chase. Fullback, nobody there. Running back, Javante Williams. And then quarterback is Reggie Campbell. So I think it comes down between the Dolphins or the Cowboys. And it's going to come down to maybe who's offering more money. That could potentially be it. The Cowboys just went 8-8. Eight and eight, And there was another deal. Oh, there was a couple more contracts. But it's unfortunate I won't be able to see their rosters at the moment. So the Bills, or excuse me, the Cowboys are offering 26.5 mil for two years. Dolphins, uh, 29 mil for two years. So all these are two-year contracts. I think we're going to join Sean McDermott and the Miami Dolphins. Just playing with Jamar Chase is huge. And they have a better O-line, I would say than the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the scheme fit is a little bit different. Like, their only good scheme fit is the Bills, but they already have Josh Allen. So, Trevor Lawrence is staying in the state of Florida, but he's going to the Miami Dolphins. He's choosing them. He's the newest member of the Finn crew. So, we'll see what this Dolphins team is looking like going into Trevor Lawrence's 12th season in the NFL we probably do have some upgrading to do. Nope, still at a 99 overall. So yeah, they just picked up the biggest free agency signing in their team's history. Jamar Chase is there. They have a stud right end in Parker Frazier. They have a great left tackle in Jim Anderson. So just taking a look, running back is Devontae Williams. Receivers are Chase, Pierre Thomas, and Greg Fleming. Tight end is Marlon Wilbin. Left tackle, Jim Anderson. Left guard, Gordon Schaefer. Center, Daniel Rudnick, who's very young, 22 years old. Right guard, Raphael Downing. And then right tackle, Paul King. Not the greatest but not the worst. We'll see what Trevor and Jamar can do this season. And in Trevor Lawrence's first year with the Miami Dolphins, they're either the one seed or they didn't make the playoffs at all. And they were the one seed. That's what you just love to see. 11 and five, and he gets a bye. So he's gonna be in the divisional round already. 4,600 yards, 35 TDs, six interceptions. He was sacked 38 times. It was a running back by committee with Javante Williams, Quan Moon, and Earl Stoudemire, or either just some of these guys got hurt, or I know, I guess Javante Williams got hurt. Only played 11 games. Lawrence, 162 yards and a touchdown. Receiving wise, Jamar Chase balled out. Same with Pierre Thomas. Greg Fleming was pretty good. And we'll see if Trevor Lawrence wins MVP. He does not. It goes to Will McAllister. Trevor Lawrence was actually fifth. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. He was second. And best quarterback, he was number three. So we'll see who the Dolphins are facing in the divisional round. And we'll see if the Dolphins can beat them in Trevor Lawrence's first career playoff game with the Dolphins. It's up against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. And the Dolphins win 24 to 21. Taking on the Colts, can the Dolphins go to the Super Bowl? And they do, and they're going to the Super Bowl in the first season with Trevor Lawrence. So Trevor Lawrence will be going to his second career Super Bowl. This is pretty big. Beat the Chiefs, Lawrence, 173 yards, two touchdowns. Mahomes threw two picks. And then in the divisional round, they ended up winning by two touchdowns. Lawrence played phenomenal. David Waldron was the Colts starting quarterback. So we'll see who the Dolphins are facing in the Super Bowl. It is the Falcons. Would you look at that? The team that beat Lawrence and the Jaguars a couple years ago. But Lawrence is on a new team. He has a stud number one receiver in Jamar Chase. Can they win it all and finally beat the Falcons against Mac Jones? And they can, yes, let's go. Trevor Lawrence comes back and gets revenge on Mac Jones for beating him a couple years ago. And Lawrence is finally a Super Bowl champion. He throws three TDs, zero interceptions. He was sacked once. Mac Jones, three TDs, zero interceptions as well. Rushing wise, 
Not really much of a rushing game at all. Marlon Wilbin going off. Jamar Chase got in the end zone. Same with Greg Fleming. Let's go. So in Warren's second year in Miami, this is his 13th season of his career. Oh no, no more Jamar Chase. Mm, that is that is a little alarming. That is a little alarming. So Lawrence will get an offer from the Dolphins most likely in week three because he only signed a two-year deal. They do beat the Bills in week one. Let's see if they go 2-0 to start the year. And they do not, but he does have an offer. I think Lawrence, he wins the championship in Miami. He will be accepting their offer. We'll see what it is looking like and how many years it was. Maybe it was just a one-year extension. Maybe it was a three-year deal. As Lawrence is 33 years old, it was a two-year extension. So the Dolphins, it's looking like they did not make the playoffs. So Lawrence did want to show his loyalty. He won a Super Bowl with the Dolphins. They end up going 7-9 and nine the year later. Maybe it was just the Super Bowl hangover. It is unfortunate. No Jamar Chase, though. Lawrence only gets to play with Chase for one year. He throws for 5,100 yards, leads the NFL for the first time in his career. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. Sherrard Higgins going off as the tight end. Wow, look at you. Look at you. All right. Where did Lawrence finish in the MVP race? He finished second again to McAllister. So in Trevor Lawrence's 14th season in the NFL, do the Dolphins add maybe a new receiver to the squad? They, oh, okay, that was the tight ends, but Sherrard Higgins is there. Pierre Thomas, Leon Allen, okay, he looks pretty new. Joe Tolock, Ben Westbrook, they got some players there. Running back is Tevin Locke, and obviously they have 99 overall Trevor Lawrence, who's going to be 35 this season. So Trevor Lawrence and the Dolphins do make the playoffs in his third year with them. We do have some upgrade points as they end up going 8-8 eight and eight and making the playoffs. Yeah, pretty shocking to make the playoffs there. He is 34 at the moment. We'll see his stats really quick, and if you want MVP, everybody actually in the top three teams in the AFC East went eight and eight and luckily the Dolphins were the ones to make the playoffs. We had Allen was uh, Trevor Lawrence's favorite receiver and Lawrence will come in not even in the top 10 in MVP which is uh, one of the first times actually it's definitely happened in his career but we'll see if the uh, Dolphins can beat the Browns in the wildcard weekend. They win in a defensive shootout 13 to 6. Can they beat the Raiders in the divisional round? They can. Okay, Lawrence is one game away from going to his second Super Bowl with the Dolphins and his luck runs out. They end up losing to the Baltimore Ravens. So this is going to be Trevor Lawrence's 15th year in the NFL could potentially be his last year. Leon Allen up to an 84 overall. You do like to see that. Tullock and John Caruthers is there at the receiver position. Sharon Higgins there. We got Jim Anderson at left tackle. Uh, left card looks pretty rough. Center looks great. Right guard looks all right. And right tackle looks iffy. And Trevor Lawrence and the Dolphins go to the playoffs. Finish with a 9-7 and seven record. Lawrence goes for 4,300 yards. Third in the NFL. 36 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Uh, we had two 1,000 yard receivers on the team. And then taking a look, did Lawrence maybe win MVP? He did not. He actually finished number five. So he only won one MVP, only one Super Bowl. Let's see what happens. On the road against the Ravens, they beat them in the uh, conference championship last year, and the Dolphins get revenge. Going up against the 13 and 3 Titans on the road is very hard to do. And the Dolphins win 10 0. Wow, they shut them out. Okay. Another 13 and 3 team on the road, the Colts. Shout out to the AFC South this year. And wow, the Dolphins are in the Super Bowl. Lawrence is going ballistic right now. And they're taking on the Detroit Lions. Could this be Lawrence's last NFL game? Another 13 and 3 seed. Can he beat three 13 and 3 seeds in a row? Oh, we'll never know. He retires. <laughs> Okay, Trevor Lawrence, it looks like retires. Can I not see? Oh, I can't see league history. Let's go. And the Dolphins ended up losing by 10. So Trevor Lawrence is going to retire from the league and his career is over. So it was 15 seasons. He won one MVP. He won one Super Bowl. He ended up losing two Super Bowls, but he made the playoffs almost every single year of his career. So that is going to be for me. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a like if you did and you want more career sims, and I'll make sure to put them out. So thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.